Hello, I hope everyone is having a brilliant day. My name is Hayley Draper and I am the strategic lead for the most able students at Kingsthorpe College. Today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about how we get the most out of those most able students and looking at whole school strategy. I want to start by taking you back to when I first took on this role. Now there are a range of terms for this group of students out there, whether it's the most able, more able, gifted and talented or high attainers. But the thing that was consistent was the belief that the interventions of these students were all extracurricular. Now, as a school, we provide a whole host of extracurricular opportunities, and it's important that our most able have the chance to explore these culturally rich opportunities. But for me, the criteria that afforded the students the label of most able was their academic capacity. And so because of that, that's where interventions need some focus. So whilst there's still a plethora of extracurricular available to them and at Kingsthorpe are most able to explore things such as Latin, they review books for big publishers, uh, our students are attending Oxbridge seminars and currently some students are applying for virtual work experience, uh, very 2021 of us. Um, but the narrative on most able has got to change to ensure that quality first teaching becomes the spotlight for their progress and their attainment. And consequently, by expanding this role from one person organising and collating extracurricular, it becomes that all teaching staff are accountable for the most able agenda. So Mandel and Marcus completed some research in 1988 that's really stood the test of time and it looks into underachievement in the most able students. And as I read the list of these six types of students, someone came to mind, whether it be someone I've taught recently or someone right back in my NQT year. And I'm sure you will find the same thing. What I've set out to do is look at how we reach these students and how we continue to get the most out of them. The first kind of most able underachiever is the coasting type. These are our contented procrastinators. They sound sincere, but they don't deliver. Or as I like to know them, the I'll be fine in the exam students. Now, as an aside, if you haven't seen the Tim Urban TED Talk Inside the Mind of a Master Procrastinator, I urge you to watch it. It's great and it sums up this type of student perfectly. Rationally, they know that they need to work hard and revise, but they would also rather do anything else. For these students, short term goals work best. In year 10, the GCSE is worlds away in their opinion, but an assessment, that's a short term goal and we can work towards that. And the way we phrase this to our students really matters. Language is so important. It doesn't put an end to procrastination. We're not miracle workers, but it does block it down into smaller, more manageable parts that we can work around and help to control. The second on the list are our anxious types, the self-critical self-doubters, also known to me as the I've never been good at insert subject here. Now, it seems obvious that the way to get the most out of these students is reassurance. But me telling them, yes, you are, you are good at English, at maths, at science, whatever it is, isn't going to be enough. These are often the students who are comparing themselves to their other most able peers. And they get downhearted because they're two marks lower on a test out of 100. We reach these students through specific praise. If they think they've never been any good at English, perhaps their persuasive writing is incredible. In maths, perhaps they're great at substitution in algebra. In French, maybe they've nailed the conditional. Specific praise shows that we have evidence that the student is able and it helps to address their academic anxiety. Next up are our defiant types the most likely to engage in arguments with their peers or with staff and the student unwilling to accept responsibility for their own underachievement. I call these the, well, I was never taught that students. Sometimes they're right. 
they may have been absent, come from a different school, a number of factors could account for this. But we can't change the past, we can only guide them forwards. Often these students were already known to us through the pastoral route and redirecting their attention to how we move forwards and where we can make some substantial gains by building on the knowledge and the skills that they already have allows us to show them that we're working together to reach goals and it's a reminder that we're on the same team. This really helps us to build the relationships that are so crucial to the success of this type of student. The fourth type, according to Mandel and Marcus, is the more abstractly named Wheeler Dealer type. These are usually some of the more popular students in school and they're characterised by their charm. These are the students that we are continually won over by, who say all of the right things, but it becomes this circular narrative as they often don't do much to change their learning behaviours. I affectionately call these the you need me to pass students. This presents a twofold issue. Now, firstly, it is kind of true. For our school data and our performance management, it would certainly help if they passed. But secondly, it places the responsibility for that success on the teacher rather than the student. To tackle this student, we can employ the same strategy back at them. I don't need you to pass. I would love it if you did. And I will do everything I can to help you. But you need you to pass. The life lesson here is about self-motivation. But by teachers ensuring that we do all that we can to help them have those tools to succeed, we're upholding our end of the bargain. They just need to uphold theirs. Like I said before, the language we use with the students is really, really important. The penultimate type is the identity search type. These are the students we often think of stereotypically as being our most able. They're confident and they are determinedly independent. But because of this, they can often forego our advice in favour of their own ideals. These are my, but I already know this, students. As an English teacher, if after teaching and in spectacles every year since qualifying, at least once a year, up to four times a year, one time, and I can still learn new things about it, I don't think anyone, student or teacher, can ever really say, I already know this. When interacting with these students, we're asking them instead to explore different applications of knowledge or to look for connections between ideas and to expand their understanding further beyond what the curriculum asks of them and into a realm of new possibilities and interests. Lastly, we have our depressed or sad types. These are the students who we worry about on the way home from work in the car. They're my, what's the point, students. They're often the hardest to reach because they have difficulties extending far out from just the academic and they need a team of people to reach them. Our colleagues in pastoral care, sometimes outside agencies and their parents. And my advice to every NQT or trainee I've come across has always been the same. Get to know the parents. They want the same thing that we do. The very best for their child. And by understanding their individual needs, we can start to build their self-esteem, reminding them that they are capable and that they can achieve until finally it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. At school, our most able can become easily complacent. They come in at the top every time in every class. And at the start of the academic year, I reached out via the Educating Northampton platform to other leads for most able in Northamptonshire. In January, I organised our first inter-school most able competition, which was based on writing. Students representing six Northampton schools were involved and the Australian author TN Baldwin judged the student entries, recording an awards video, and the winners received some prizes. I'm hoping to see this group really expand and work on other competitions or collaborate on learning experiences together, pushing our most able students out of their comfort zones and allowing them to connect with their peers in learning. If you'd like your school to be involved in our group, then I would love to hear from you 
and you can reach out to me via my Twitter handle at Hayley Draper 8. Getting the most out of our most able relies on us changing the narrative. Going from I'll be fine in the exam to I'll be fine in the exam because I've worked hard. I've never been good at to I keep getting better at. I was never taught that. Do I have the skills to work this out? You need me to pass, to I need me to pass. I already know this, so I will keep developing my understanding. And what's the point? I am someone and I will succeed. These students need us to show them that they are capable and that they are the most able students that we know. Thank you so much for listening and have a fantastic day.